Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Welcome to the Gospel Truth broadcast. Welcome to a very special edition of the Gospel Truth. If you honor God, God will honor you. If you are born again and you have God on your side, you are the winner. If you will just trust in God, God will help you to kill your giants. This is Lessons from David. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm nearing the end of my second week of teaching on Lessons from David. And this is our free gift to you. We're going to give away this entire book. Now, of course, we always say that the things are available for a suggested donation, and so we give away a lot of material, but we just want you to have this. And we've also not only got this in uh, English, but I've got it in Spanish. I've got a study guide. And then we have two albums, a CD and a DVD album. They will also go into this. And so I encourage you to please get that. We're now in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and this is where David goes out and fights Goliath. And I've already spent three days in this one chapter building up to this. And man, some of the things that I've said, this is awesome. These are some of the truths that have just transformed my life. I can guarantee I would not have been able to see the miracles and the things that God has done in my life without these truths that came directly from these scriptures. These are some of the major things that God has spoken to me. And I know that this would bless you if you just receive it. That's the reason I'm encouraging you to please get the materials because just hearing it in little 30 minute increments, uh, you don't get the full impact of it. So yesterday I was talking about how that nobody believed in David. His brother ridiculed him. The king said, you can't go fight. Goliath, but he referred back to when he killed the lion and the bear on the backside of the desert. And he says, that's how I know that God can do this through me. He had seen God prove himself faithful in previous times when nobody was watching, when the stakes were low. He proved God faithful. And because of that, he knew God had come through when it got to something bigger. See, I can relate to this directly that I have stood and I have trusted and believed God for finances on a much smaller scale than what I'm doing now. But it was that, that when I stretched myself and believed God and God came through, that built my faith. That gave me confidence that now I'm doing it on a much larger scale. But I didn't just go from having never trusted God to believing God for over $5 million per month. I can guarantee that doesn't happen just automatically. If you go from zero to 1,000 miles an hour, that is not acceleration. That is a wreck. It will kill you. You can't do that. You have to start off and accelerate. Likewise, the kingdom of God is just little by little, here a little, there a little. God said that He would not give the promised land to the Israelites all at once. He wouldn't just conquer the inhabitants all at once. He would give it to them little by little because if He gave it to them all at once, they wouldn't be able to occupy it. The fields would go fallow before they could uh, go in and, and straighten it out. The beast of the field would multiply. So He would give it to them little by little as they were able to handle it in Deuteronomy chapter 7. And so this is the way that the kingdom works. You have to trust God in a little thing. You know, it's like I've heard this statement before. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. If you try and swallow an elephant at one time, it's going to kill you. But you could eat an elephant if you ate it one bite at a time. The kingdom of God is like that. You have to be faithful in a small thing, and that builds your faith and gives you confidence. And then you step greater and greater and greater. I had a guy come to me one time who was going to buy this old Kmart building, and it was $2 million to buy it. And he was going to turn it into a youth center. And he had an entire um, prospectus that he had put out on it. And he talked about how many youth were you know, on drugs, how many were going into jail, and it was because they didn't have anywhere to go. And all of his study and everything was great. And he, he showed how much it was going to cost, what the payments would be. He had worked out what the utilities. I mean, he had put a lot of effort into it. And it was all good. And it looked really, really good. And he came to me and he says, what do you think? And I started asking him questions. I said, so, have you ever ministered to youth? Well, no. I said, have you ever done a Bible study with youth? No. Have you ever been involved in a church ministering to youth? No. 
Have you done it one-on-one -on -one with it? Well, no. And I said, this isn't God. I said, it won't work. And he got really offended. Well, why would you say that? I've done all this research and I can... And I said, because you don't go from having never ministered to youth to all of a sudden having a 20,000 square foot building and you have all of these things going. You don't do that. There's first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear. There's the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. You have to prove God in a smaller realm before you increase to a bigger realm. And you know what? Sure enough, it didn't work. That's been 20 years ago, and that youth center never came to pass. And there's some of you that say, don't understand these things. You don't look at this, and you just think, I'm going to go out and fight Goliath. Well, if you hadn't fa been faithful protecting those few little sheep and fought with the lion and the bear, you aren't going to make it when you fight against Goliath. You just need to start being faithful wherever you are. Instead of waiting on the great opportunity, go get involved in your church. Go out on a street corner and start ministering to people. Start a Bible study. Start doing something. AND YOU MINISTER WHERE YOU ARE, AND AS YOU PROVE YOURSELF FAITHFUL IN THAT, GOD WILL OPEN UP GREATER OPPORTUNITY AND A GREATER OPPORTUNITY. THAT'S THE WAY THAT IT WORKS. MAN, THOSE ARE GREAT TRUTHS. AND AT THE END OF THIS 37TH VERSE, AFTER DAVID SAID, I'M GOING TO KILL THIS CERTAIN CIRCUMCISED PHILISTINE, SAUL SAID UNTO DAVID, GO, AND THE LORD BE WITH THEE. NOW, YOU GOT TO GET THE PICTURE HERE. GOLIATH HAD SAID, THAT IF I FIGHT AND win, WIN, THEN INSTEAD OF TENS OF THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE DYING ON THE BATTLEFIELD, THIS MEANS THAT THE WHOLE NATION OF ISRAEL WILL JUST SUBMIT THEMSELVES TO US AND YOU WILL BE CONQUERED. BUT IF THE ISRAELITE WINS, THEN THE WHOLE PHILISTINES WOULD SUBMIT THEMSELVES AND WILL BE CONQUERED. THERE WAS A LOT AT STAKE. THIS WAS THE COMPLETE SUBJECTION OF A NATION TO ANOTHER NATION. AND SO th THIS WAS HUGE. THERE WAS... THE STAKES WERE HIGH IN THIS THING. AND HERE'S DAVID, A RUNT, A PRETTY BOY, NOT A STRONG, POWERFUL GUY. HE WASN'T EVEN OLD ENOUGH TO BE IN THE ARMY. HE WAS JUST A YOUTH. AND YET, AFTER HE SAID THESE THINGS, LOOK, SAUL SAID, GO, AND THE LORD BE WITH THEE. NOW, THAT'S AMAZING TO ME. IF YOU STOP AND THINK ABOUT WHAT WAS AT STAKE AND WHAT uh, SAUL STOOD TO LOSE IF DAVID LOST, WHY WOULD HE TRUST THIS YOUTH TO GO OUT AND FIGHT A GIANT? AND I BELIEVE IT'S BECAUSE SAUL HAD THE SPIRIT OF THE LORD COME UPON HIM. YOU COULD READ ABOUT THIS OVER IN, I BELIEVE IT WAS CHAPTER 12, 1 SAMUEL CHAPTER 12. AND HE HAD THE SPIRIT OF THE LORD COME UPON HIM. AND I MEAN, HE GOT BOLD. HE TOOK A SWORD AND HE CUT AN OX INTO 12 PIECES AND SENT ONE PIECE TO EACH ONE OF THE TRIBES OF ISRAEL. AND HE SAYS, I'M GOING TO DO THIS TO YOUR OX IF YOU DON'T COME. AND FOLLOW ME. AND FEAR CAME UPON THEM, AND THE ENTIRE NATION TURNED OUT, AND THEY WENT AND WON A GREAT BATTLE. AND SO SAUL HAD HAD THIS SPIRIT OF THE LORD COME UPON HIM. MATTER OF FACT, WHEN HE FIRST WAS ANOINTED, OR TOLD THAT HE WAS GOING TO BE ANOINTED, THIS WAS BEFORE SAUL WAS ACTUALLY ANOINTED TO BE KING, uh, SAMUEL PROPHESIED OVER HIM THAT HE WOULD MEET THESE PROPHETS, THAT THEY'D GIVE HIM A LOAF OF BREAD AND A BOTTLE OF WINE, AND THAT HE WOULD DO THESE THINGS. AND IT SAYS WHEN HE TURNED, TO WALK AWAY FROM SAMUEL THAT THE LORD GAVE HIM ANOTHER HEART. AND HE EXPERIENCED, SAUL EXPERIENCED THE POWER OF GOD JUST BOOM LIKE THAT CHANGING YOU AND MAKING YOU SOMEBODY THAT YOU AREN'T IN YOURSELF. SAUL HAD EXPERIENCED THIS FIRSTHAND. NOW, AT THIS TIME, HE WAS IN REBELLION TOWARDS GOD, AND INSTEAD OF THE ANOINTING OF GOD ON HIM, THERE WAS ACTUALLY AN EVIL SPIRIT FROM THE LORD THAT WAS UPON SAUL. AND SO HE WASN'T FLOWING IN THIS AT THIS TIME, BUT HE HAD EXPERIENCE. AND I PERSONALLY BELIEVE THAT WHAT HAPPENED WAS WHEN DAVID WAS SPEAKING WITH SO MUCH POWER AND AUTHORITY, SAUL RECOGNIZED THE ANOINTING OF GOD. SAUL RECOGNIZED IT. HE HAD FLOWED IN THAT BEFORE. AND HE RECOGNIZED IT, AND HE KNEW THAT IF GOD IS ON YOUR SIDE, THAT NOBODY CAN BE AGAINST YOU. AND SO SAUL JUST SAID, GO, AND THE LORD BE WITH YOU. NOW, THAT'S ONE OF THE GREATEST MIRACLES IN THIS WHOLE STORY IS THAT THIS GUY WAS WILLING TO PUT HIS ENTIRE NATION ON THE LINE BECAUSE HE SAW THE ANOINTING AND THE BLESSING OF GOD IN A YOUTH. THAT'S AN AMAZING TRUTH RIGHT THERE. BUT AFTER HE DID THIS, LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 38, AND SAUL ARMED DAVID WITH HIS ARMOR, AND HE PUT A HELMET OF BRASS UPON HIS HEAD, 
ALSO HE ARMED HIM WITH THE COAT OF MAIL. AND DAVID GIRDED HIS SWORD UPON HIS ARMOR, AND HE ESSAYED TO GO, FOR HE HAD NOT PROVED IT. AND DAVID SAID UNTO SAUL, I CANNOT GO WITH THESE, FOR I HAVE NOT PROVED THEM. AND DAVID PUT THEM OFF HIM. NOW THIS IS AMAZING. SAUL HAD TOLD DAVID, YOU CAN'T FIGHT WITH GOLIATH. HE'S A MAN OF WAR FROM HIS YOUTH, AND YOU ARE BUT A YOUTH. IT WON'T WORK. BUT THEN WHEN DAVID SPOKE FORTH HIS FAITH, AND SAUL FINALLY SAW THAT GOD WAS WITH HIM, THEN SAUL WANTED TO GIVE HIM HIS ARMOR. YOU KNOW, THIS IS SO TYPICAL. I'VE HAD PEOPLE COME TO ME AND SAY, YOU CAN'T DO THIS. YOU CAN'T DO THIS. IT WON'T WORK. YOU'LL NEVER MAKE IT. BUT WHEN THEY SEE THAT I'M CONVINCED AND I'M ANOINTED AND THAT GOD'S USING ME, THEN THEY'LL SAY, WELL, IF YOU'RE GOING TO DO IT, WELL, AT LEAST DO THIS. YOU NEED TO GO TO CEMETERY, I MEAN SEMINARY, AND YOU NEED TO GET THIS EDUCATION. I HAD PEOPLE TELL ME THAT, NO, YOU CAN'T GO INTO MINISTRY. BUT WHEN THEY SAW THAT I WAS DETERMINED, WELL, THEN YOU NEED TO AT LEAST GO OVER HERE AND GO TO THIS PLACE AND DO THIS. IT'S AMAZING TO ME THAT THEY TELL YOU YOU CAN'T DO IT, BUT THEN WHEN THEY SEE THAT YOU'RE GOING TO GO AHEAD AND FOLLOW GOD REGARDLESS, THEN THEY START GIVING YOU ALL OF THEIR COUNSEL THAT IS DOING THEM NO GOOD. LIKE, FOR INSTANCE, SAUL WANTED TO PUT HIS ARMOR ON DAVID, AND YET THAT ARMOR WASN'T DOING SAUL ANY GOOD. SAUL WASN'T GOING OUT AND FIGHTING THE GIANT. YOU KNOW, IT SAYS THAT SAUL WAS THE LARGEST MAN IN THE ENTIRE NATION, THE NEXT TALLEST PERSON THAT CAME ONLY TO HIS SHOULDER, AND DAVID WAS JUST A YOUTH. SO I BET YOU THAT DAVID WAS PROBABLY THAT MUCH SHORTER THAN SAUL. AND TO HIM, FOR HIM TO PUT ON SAUL'S ARMOR, I COULD JUST IMAGINE THAT HE COULD PROBABLY TURN ALL THE WAY AROUND INSIDE THAT ARMOR AND NEVER MOVE THE ARMOR. IT DIDN'T FIT HIM. SAUL WAS WANTING TO ARM DAVID WITH WHAT WASN'T WORKING FOR HIM. AND BOY, SO MANY PEOPLE WILL DO THIS. THEY'LL TELL YOU, WELL, YOU NEED TO DO IT THIS WAY. YOU NEED TO DO THAT. YOU NEED TO STICK WITH WHAT WORKS FOR YOU. YOU KNOW, THERE'S SO MANY PEOPLE THAT WANT ME TO PRESENT MYSELF IN A DIFFERENT WAY. WE, we ARE INTERESTED IN REACHING THE YOUNGER GENERATION. I AM, I'M EXCITED ABOUT THAT. YOU KNOW, I'M GETTING OLDER. I'M NEARLY, I JUST TURNED 69. AND uh, I'M AWARE THAT MY TIME, I'M NOT GOING TO BE HERE FOREVER. AND SO I WANT TO RAISE UP YOUNGER PEOPLE. BUT THEY WANT ME TO BECOME SOMETHING I'M NOT. THEY WANT ME TO START DOING ALL of THE THINGS THAT THE YOUNG PEOPLE DO, AND I'M NOT AGAINST THAT. YOU CAN DO WHATEVER GOD LEADS YOU TO DO, BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? I'M JUST GOING TO BE ME. I'M GOING TO BE... THIS IS WHAT WORKS FOR ME. I HAVE SEEN GOD RAISE MY OWN SON FROM THE DEAD. I'VE SEEN MULTIPLE PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD. I'VE SEEN GREAT PHYSICAL MIRACLES. I'VE SEEN FINANCIAL MIRACLES. I'M SEEING GOD DO THINGS. I'M JUST STICKING WITH WHAT WORKS FOR ME. AND YET PEOPLE ARE ALWAYS TRYING TO GET ME TO DO THIS, AND I NEED TO START DOING THESE OTHER THINGS. I'M JUST NOT GOING TO DO IT. THIS IS AN ATTITUDE THAT DAVID HAD. DAVID WASN'T GOING TO GO OUT AND FIGHT WITH SOMETHING THAT HE WASN'T USED TO, THAT HE WASN'T ACCUSTOMED TO. IS THIS SAYING THAT ARMOR IS BAD? NO. IS IT SAYING THAT USING A SWORD IS BAD? NO. BUT THAT'S NOT WHAT DAVID WAS COMFORTABLE WITH. HE JUST DID WHAT WORKED FOR HIM. I THINK THAT IS REALLY IMPORTANT. AND I TELL YOU, WE ARE ALWAYS TRYING TO MODEL OURSELVES AFTER SOMEBODY ELSE. AND I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU CAN'T LEARN FROM SOMEBODY, THAT YOU CAN'T BE INSPIRED BY WHAT OTHER PEOPLE HAVE DONE, BUT YOU NEED TO FIND OUT WHAT WORKS FOR YOU. YOU KNOW, I'M A MINISTER, AND MY PEERS ARE MINISTERS, AND WE GO TO MINISTERS' CONFERENCES, AND I SEE PEOPLE THAT ARE WANTING TO REACH PEOPLE, THEY'RE WANTING TO SEE THEIR CHURCH GROW, BUT RATHER THAN GETTING A WORD FROM GOD ABOUT WHAT DOES GOD WANT YOU TO DO, THEY GO AND THEY HEAR SOMEBODY ELSE HAD A BUS MINISTRY, SOMEBODY ELSE HAD A YOUTH MINISTRY, SOMEBODY ELSE HAD A YOUTH NIGHT, AND THEY DO THIS AND THAT, AND THEY JUST START IMPLEMENTING AND FOLLOWING OTHER PEOPLE WITHOUT HAVING GOD TELL THEM WHAT TO DO. THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT THE KINGDOM WORKS. YOU KNOW, JOSHUA WENT IN AND FOUGHT THE BATTLE OF JERICHO, AND GOD TOLD HIM, HE SAW THE, the ANGEL OF THE LORD STANDING THERE, AND uh, HE TOLD HIM HOW TO FIGHT THIS BATTLE. SO HE MARCHED AROUND JERICHO ONE TIME EACH DAY, AND THEY NEVER SAID A WORD. AND THEN ON THE SEVENTH DAY, THEY MARCHED SEVEN TIMES, AND THEN THEY SHOUTED, AND WHEN THEY SHOUTED, THE WALLS FELL DOWN FLAT. I MEAN, IT WAS A HUGE FORTIFIED CITY. I'VE ACTUALLY READ THINGS THAT THEY SAID YOU COULD PLAY A BASEBALL GAME ON TOP OF THE WALLS. THAT'S HOW WIDE, HOW MASSIVE THEY WERE, AND YET WHEN THEY SHOUTED, THE WALLS JUST FELL DOWN FLAT and they were able to conquer the city. You know, that was awesome. But Jericho, I mean, Joshua never used that battle plan again. 
See, there's a lot of people today that just because it worked in Jericho, man, you would go to every city and march around it and shout and expect the same thing to happen. It was a great victory, but it only happened one time. We need to be listening to the Lord so that we just don't cookie cutter everything and say, well, this worked for them, so I'll go do this. That may not be what God called you to do. What has God called you to do? You know, one of the things that we do, we give our materials away. Now, I've gotten to a place where I say it's a suggested donation, but this we, we are giving this book away. There will be tens of thousands of these that I give away. And over the life of our ministry, over 50 years, I, we've lost count, but if you include our website and I make everything on our website free, we have given away hundreds of millions of books, CDs, DVDs, videos, on and on it goes. And did you know when I first started doing this, uh, we were giving away cassette tapes, and I guarantee you I didn't have the money to do it, but I just felt like that's what God told me to do. And I had people come and say, you can't do that, and they tried to get me to do it the way that they had done it. And yet, this is just what God put in my heart. And I just decided that live or die, sink or swim, I was going to do what God put in my heart. And did you know what? It's proven to work. We are now succeed. We are having finances come in. We're able to build things. We're able to do things. And yet, we give all of our material away. In the natural, this doesn't make sense, but that's what God told me to do. And I have had dozens of people, even people that I hired as managers, tell me how foolish this was and that if you really want to prosper, you got to start selling everything and not give it out unless they give you so much money. See, that's what Saul was doing. Saul was telling David how to go out and fight. Why would you listen to a person who was scared themselves? And they weren't going out and fighting Goliath. They weren't going to do it, and yet they were going to tell you how to do it. See, if you stop and think about it, this doesn't make sense. And yet there are people that They've never led anybody to the Lord. They've never done anything significant. They haven't seen God use them, and yet they're going to tell you how you need to do it. Don't, don't listen to that. What has God spoken to you? What has God put in your heart? Just do it. And don't compare yourself with everybody else. You know, the Scripture says, but they comparing themselves among themselves and measuring themselves by themselves are not wise. The average person, even the average Christian today, is not living a victorious life. They are not stretching themselves. They are limiting God. They aren't believing God for anything big. And yet, they will tell you what to do, and you feel pressure to conform to the common wisdom that's being spoken today. Just forget that. Do what God tells you to do. Do it the way He tells you to do it. When, do it when He tells you to do it. And just listen to God and get to where you follow God. And if you will do that, you will prosper. And then the next verse says, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So, you know, I've heard speculation about why he got five stones. And I honestly don't know. The Scripture doesn't explain. It is true that Goliath had four brothers. And so one of the possibilities is that David got a stone for all of the giants. I'll not only take on Goliath, I'll take on his four brothers. Somebody might say, well, how would he know that Goliath had four brothers? I guarantee you, if you're nine foot six inches tall and if all of your brothers are that big, people hear about you. They would hear about this family that had all of these giants in it, they would know how many there were. So that's a real distinct possibility that he was going to take on the whole family. He wasn't going to stop with Goliath. He'd wipe out the old, whole family if they came against him. It's also possible that he got four extra stones in case the first one didn't do the job. And you know what? I know that there's a lot of people say, oh, well, no, that wouldn't be faith. You know, faith isn't just believing that things work perfectly, you just, you, you believe in the end result regardless of what it takes to get there. Like this building that I'm sitting in right here, when we first moved into this building, we needed $3.2 million to finish out this construction. The Lord told me to do it without a loan, and I committed myself to that. But we wanted to move in in September of 2000. 
and four, I didn't move in until November of 2004. And at the opening rally, we were about three months late moving into this building, and I had a woman come up to me, and she says, are you disappointed that you missed your September deadline? And I just kind of laughed at her, and I said, this is a miracle. This is the greatest miracle, financial provision that I've ever experienced in my life. $3.2 million came in in 14 months. We got this thing done. I said, no, I'm not disappointed. I said, I would have liked to have been in here in September, but I've never done anything perfectly in my life. I just do things until they work. And I'm not... If I run into a snag, it doesn't depress me or discourage me because I just keep at it and I eventually am going to win. And I believe that that could have been the attitude that David had, that he took five stones because if the first one didn't knock uh, Goliath down, well, then he'd use another one and another one and another one. He'd use whatever he's got to do. And I don't think that that's a lack of faith. That's just determination. It could have been either of these things. He could have done it just to, I'm going to be prepared in case I don't bring Goliath down on the very first try. I'm going to stick with it until I win. Or he could have done it just so that he could fight Goliath's four brothers. I don't know which it was. Doesn't really matter. The point is that, man, he was prepared. He was prepared to take on the whole family or he was prepared to keep fighting until he won. Either way, it's a good thing. And so in verse 41, it says, And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. Now, this gives you an indication of how big Goliath was. He was not only at least nine foot six inches tall, but he was so tall that he had a man carrying a shield that co completely covered the man and shielded Goliath. This was a huge thing. This is like a tank coming against somebody with a sword. In the natural, there was just no way that this was going to work. And in verse 42, it says, And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy. That word ruddy again means red and of a fair countenance. In other words, he was just a pretty guy. He was a beautiful guy, but he did not look like a fighter. So remember this. David was not honored by his own family. He wasn't even included in the first group that went to be anointed to be king. His brother Eliab ridiculed him and began to impute unto him some, uh, you know, uh, that he was irresponsible. He had left the sheep. So his family didn't honor him. His older brother ridiculed him. The king had said, you're a youth. You can't fight against him. Now here's the enemy disdaining him and saying, am I a dog that you send to me a young boy like this? So everybody, the armies, his family, the king, and now the enemy, everybody was against him. But you know what? God was for him. And here's another great lesson to learn from David, and that is that if God is for you, who can be against you? I tell you, God is for you. God wants you to win. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. If you would humble yourself and depend upon God and not depend upon your own self and your own resources, God would make you overcome. You would win. Today, Andrew and his partners would like to offer you his book, Lessons from David, absolutely free. To receive this free book, go to awmi.net. This offer is limited to one free book per household and only available for a limited time. So go to awmi.net and get yours today. I just want to emphasize once again that it is really important that you get this product. This book is a life changer and we not only have it in English, we have it in Spanish right here. And then we have a study guide. This is over 300 pages and it is a great discipleship tool. And then we have DVDs that were taken from my television broadcast and also CDs. This teaching on David would change your life. I really believe that. So once again, I encourage you to receive this. Some of this is free. Our announcer will give you all that information. You can get Andrew's Lessons from David book in either English or Spanish today absolutely free as a special website offer when you go to awmi.net. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is only available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. 
This teaching is also available in a study guide, a CD album, or in a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount. The second audio teaching in today's series is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this second CD free of charge. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. If the lines are busy, remember you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awmi.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. The following video is an excerpt from our latest construction update, where Andrew gives a tour of the finishing touches to the Phase 2 building. To see the full video, visit awmi.net slash construction update. We are that close to having this completely done. I'm standing here in front of our waterfall. This is the very first time that we've had it functional and it has turned out just exactly the way I wanted it to. It's awesome. We've now got the floor totally exposed. Now it's still got to be dusted. It's got some, it's not finalized, but it really looks nice. And we've got in our furniture. Now the furniture is kind of, it's still coming in. We've got some furniture that's been boxed down there that's not unboxed. So we'll go in here to the auditorium. Okay, so now we've just about got everything in the auditorium done. So all of these seats in the bottom now are installed. The ones down here on the bottom level all have this writing tablet. And this is for a handicap spot here. Also along the aisles, each one of them have a little light in the seat. So this will give you a little idea of some of our parking garage. These are precast panels. We've got a total of 984 precast panels. These are poured down in Colorado Springs and then they're trucked up here. And then this crane picks these panels up and puts them up. That is the top level of the parking garage, five levels. Then there's the fourth level right here. What you're looking at, this is the third level. Thank you for being a part of it. And for sure, the next construction update we will be in this building. God bless you. Thank you partners for supporting Andrew in his efforts to complete the construction of the phase two building. To see the full video, visit awmi.net slash construction update. Hello, this is Andrew Womack and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. You are gonna be blessed, so check it out. It's 24-7, gospeltruth.tv.